Well hello everyone, how are you? Welcome back. In this video, we're gonna look at this. Some 90s tat, yay! Okay, now I may be being a little harsh there, but um, part of me says actually maybe I'm not. So this, is a late 1997 Hoover Turbo Power U 1065. Now 1065 is actually quite important in the lineage of Turbo Power because it's the last of the hard bag uprights with tools built in to appear under the Turbo Power name. The very last one, which is pretty cool. Now, at this juncture, I would just like to do a massive shout out to Charlie, who works at Whatnot. Uh, Charlie found this machine. It came in to his shop for, for sale, um, and he bought it, paid for it, and, uh, and then he kept it because he wasn't sure if he wanted it or not. Uh, he wasn't sure if it, if, if it was the machine for him. So he put it into like a storeroom, and I go into to the shop every once in a while, every few weeks, when I go and visit my friend Richard. And um, I went in, saw him there, and he said, oh, I've got this turbo power in the back there. I said, oh, that's interesting, let's have, let's have a look. So he took me into the back room and uh, showed me this one. I said, like, oh, that's interesting, that, 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 that's really cool. That's a very late one. And we talked about the date of it, and you know, we looked at the serial number, because this, this has got a candy style serial number on it. It's not the, uh, the, the, the Hoover style. Um, and then he wasn't sure what he wanted to do with it. He wasn't sure, he wasn't, he wasn't sure if he wanted to keep it or not, um, because I think he really wants an older machine. He wants an older turbo power, like one of the Mark 1s or the Mark 2s. This one is not really for him. It's sort of too late. So he kept it whilst he was thinking about it. I went back and saw him um, last weekend, I think, and it was still there. So we had, we had a chat about it, and he sold it to me, which is great because it means the machine is saved. Um, it's quite an important machine because it represents the end of the line of the hard bag turbo power uprights. Now this, by this point, would have been like the budget cleaner. It was the budget upright in Hoover's range. Um, the turbo power three was on sale at that time. And of course they were fighting Dyson in like a battle to the death in 97, 98. So this would have been very cheap, probably something like 89 pounds, if I'm gonna guess, which comparatively to a Dyson DC01 in 97, you could spend 250 quid on a DC01, but for 89 pound, you got a Hoover upright. Um, uh, yeah, not a good Hoover upright, but you, it was a Hoover Upright <laughs> with a guarantee, which you more than likely would have used. So you can tell at a glance, actually, that this is a very, very late one because it has 600 written here on the back door with a dot next to it. Now, Hoover had the habit of uh, listing the machine's features at this point. Indeed, if you look at my Turbo Power 2 videos, um, on like the real top of the range models. They've got four things written here. This machine being the lowliest, most basic cleaner Hoover did at that time, apart from the Turbo Power Junior, of course, has just six, 600. That's it, 600. 600 watt. Oh, 600 watt. Oh, <laughs> it's so funny. <clears throat> this is a 600 watt Turbo Power. Actually, it's more than 600 watts, but they couldn't put 660 on it because it would have looked weird. No, 630, I'm sorry. Yeah, they, they didn't put 630 on it. But this machine, <laughs> oh God. Turbo power, turbo power was never the quietest vacuum cleaner. There's very little sound in insulation around that motor in there. In fact, it's just the motor. Or you, like, you can poke your poke something through that, that, that slit there and you'd be touching the motor. And you've got a cooling fan on this side, you've got the main airflow, direct airflow on that side. And, oh, if you want a headache, use one of these. 
because that motor is awful. <laughs> it is it is awful because it is so loud and they get louder over time because of how they uh, how they're made you've got obviously got the bag here and then there's the the bottom of the bag case is here which is open you've got the cooling vent here so any dust that comes out of here or from the bellows gets immediately sucked into the motor it coats the edge of the cooling fan which puts the motor out of balance so oftentimes you'll find when you have a turbo power that sounds very rough it's actually the cooling fan that's causing the problem not the main fan because uh, it's whirling around at a hell of a rate even on the early machines it was it was quick but on these later ones with their maximum <laughs> of 630 watts wow that is absolutely mental but of course they were in the wattage wars you know no one would have bought this if it had said 400 on it Four, 400 here keith this one's only 400 what it's only 400 that dyson's 1200 is it yeah no i'm going to spend more money on the dyson because it's got more hundreds than than that one for 89 pounds 89 pound i'm not spending that on a 400 i want the 1200 yes all right, it is the checkbook. So these were up against it. They really were up against it. And I genuinely think if anybody had actually tried one of these in the store <laughs> before they bought it, they'd have gotten no, 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 no. Because do you really want a migraine every time you vacuum your rug? Well, that's what you got with this. Oh, uh. Now, this is such a cheap machine. It is so cost reduced, it's almost funny. Virtually everything from the original Turbo Power, <clears throat> all, of its, all of its features are gone. There's nothing. There's not even a lower cord hook, which was there. <laughs> it's quite funny. There's no cord hook, it's just a blanking plate here. On the earlier ones, this would flip out and you could wind your flex around it. You literally just gather up your cable and slap it on the back. No tools with this one either, un unfortunately. Oh, there's a rod though. That's good. Yeah, we've got a rod. I think that's in the wrong way around. So, where is it? Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, no tools. Shame. But, oh, I can find the tools. Um, no, no, no twin speed on it, single speed switch mounted on the top of the bag case there. Um, yep, yeah, single speed, no bag foot indicator, no cable rewind, no air freshener, no headlight, no lower cord hook, nothing. Basic, buggeringly bollocking basic. That's it, that's what you got for your 89 quid. You don't see these very often now, and um, again, that's one of the reasons why I really did want to save it. Because they didn't sell many. They were so budget and so rubbish that people were just like, no. And, and of course, at that time, you could buy your Dyson on credit. Um, you could pay for it £12 a month for the next 25 years. And people would rather do that. They would rather do that because Dyson's marketing was so strong back then everybody had to have a Dyson everybody just they had to have it and these machines well they just sort of fell by fell by the wayside uh, on their own merits they kind of fell by the wayside because they were rubbish just really rubbish but they were cheap and if you didn't have much money and you couldn't get any credit well this is pretty much what you were left with I'm going to plug it in now <laughs> And I'm going to deafen myself. I will say, in this machine's defence, it does need a service. Uh, that cooling fan really does need some work. So don't judge it too harshly. Although, judge it harshly if you so wish. Let's plug it in. Oh. Right. <laughs> oh, God. Here we go.
Okay, thanks for that superpower. That's that's a lovely demonstration. Oh God. So yeah, there you go. That's an indication of just how loud they are. Howlers. Howlers. They howl like a banshee. <sighs> the early early machines, they were never quiet, but you wouldn't say that a, a Mark I turbo power would give you a headache. This one definitely does. So what are we going to do with it? Well, definitely needs a service. Got to clean that cooling fan, give the bearings an oil. I think it needs a new belt as well. Oh yeah, the belt is absolutely terrible. Um, new belt, new bag. Give it a clean and a polish. Definitely one to keep. As, as I've said to you numerous times now, it's an important machine because it is the last of the line of this style turbo power. So definitely one to keep, definitely one to treasure. And I'm so glad that I own it. And I, I you probably sit there and think, well, well, he's obviously not very happy with that because it's crap. But whilst it is crap, I love it. I love it. I'm so glad that I've got it. I'm so glad that it can be saved because you just don't see them anymore. You don't see them. It's, what is it, 25 years old now. It's amazing that it has survived, frankly. Even from the, from the moment it's born, it's trying to kill itself because it's trying to tear itself to pieces. So, yeah, it is great that it's still here um, and we can do something with it and we can give it a happy retirement. So that's it for th this video. We'll definitely see this machine again in the future. Don't forget to do the usual commenting, subscribing and liking because I love hearing from you guys. I, I really actually genuinely do. Um, and of course it helps me out with the channel as well. So until next time, you guys take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.